welcome to, welcome to Brainstorming Coffee Group. This group has been created for people that are willing to join us and learn from others. So if you're a professional, mm -hmm. if you're someone with passion about one particular topic, you are welcome to contact us and then I can bring you in and you can talk about your favorite topic. In this case, today, I'm delighted to introduce Kimberly Berry. about the importance of the customer journey. This is very important. We're gonna talk a lot. I'm gonna ask you so many questions, Kim. I will give you yes. the opportunity to share a screen with everyone, but also give me some time and also people that will be joining because we want to extract everything from you. <laughs> yeah. Well, absolutely, extract away, extract away. <laughs> I brought up, I, and I did make a presentation. So if you are catching this on the replay, um, just know there's a slide deck coming. <laughs> so there you go. You've been yes, forewarned. That's great, that's there's great. Green, so I, I say one more time, welcome to the um, audience that we have online. Uh, we have some other people also joining live. So we're gonna be able to interact. Uh, this part, what I do as a presentation, I do a simple presentation about the brainstorming coffee group, but one and then everybody take their cup <laughs> and drink their coffee and they feel comfortable. This is something very familiar. You can drink water, soda, whatever, and uh, just feel comfortable. So it's your time, Kim, to share your screen when you have a chance and we can start talking and Go ahead. All right. Oh, <laughs> Do you see this? Every everything up okay? Okay, yeah. perfect. Just want to make sure. Oh, actually, by the um, way, I'm Kimberly so Berry. <laughs> I'm the founder and CEO of Coaching Hub, and um, I've been a personal professional coach for many, many years now. And one of the things that I really love is strategy. I love marketing. I love the psychology of marketing, and I really you know, when, when I'm working with clients, I want to be able to better help them understand their customer's journey, which ultimately means how do I get this person to make a buying decision with me? Right. <clears throat> so we're all business owners where we, you know, if you're a service-based business, this will, you know, really apply to you. But even if you have a product-based business, some of the same foundational principles are going to apply. So it's, you know, it may be not um, necessarily challenges and pain points, but it's going to be more about desires and wants. And so, you know, it's always, um, you know, we're always as people either running away from pain or running towards pleasure, right? And so, you know, both can apply here, but I am focusing on service-based businesses uh, just because that's really where my wheelhouse is. But um, yeah, let's go ahead and dive in to why the customer journey, right? Why why should anybody care about this? It's <laughs> like, Kimberly, what? I just oh, want to know wow. how to like <laughs> post on social media. What are you talking about? Yeah. Well, one of the things that's really important about the customer journey is that you have to gain clarity on who your ideal client is. And like I always say, you're not everybody's everything. You're somebody's someone. And you need to focus on that person to understand what they truly want and they truly need, right? Mm -hmm. And that's going to help you attract the right leads to your business and create powerful, powerful marketing um, for that entire journey process. It also helps you identify where your customers are at on any given moment of the awareness scale. And what I mean by the awareness scale is, and I'll dive in deeper a little bit, um, a few slides down, but how aware are they about their problem and solution and your product and being ready to buy? So it's kind of all of this, you know, how do you know where somebody is? Because your marketing will need to adjust depending on where they're at on the scale. And this is a common mistake uh, I see a lot of entrepreneurs make. They make one style of marketing targeted at one piece of this awareness scale. And you really have to be aware of every point and make sure that you're connecting with people in every point. So for example, if I, um, Let's say that I'm somebody, you know, who kind of, I understand I have a problem. I go to my friend Google 
I start typing up, you know, try, you know, how do I solve my unhappiness? How do I find happiness? How do I find joy? And I start typing it in there. Well, now I'm starting to, you know, look for answers and seek answers. But if I come in with that same person and start giving them solution-based language, they're not going to understand that because they're not there yet. Exactly. So we've got to walk them through that process. Mm -hmm. So the customer journey really helps you understand, are they ready to buy? And if not, do they just need some more nurturing to get to that point, right? right. And some people just don't know when, when and where that point is. So do you really know your ideal client or customer? I, a lot of people say, yeah, sure, of course, right? Everybody needs my product. Exactly. Um, <laughs> which, yeah, right? I mean, like, of course, you, you, we're really proud of what we've created. But we all have different spending habits, shopping habits, preferences, uh, you know, where we live, where we shop, what do we do, what are our interests and hobbies, what are our income or educational level. And mm -hmm. these things are important to discern. Does my ideal client, is she like a target shopper and she loves going and getting a good deal? Or is she more the Nordstrom kind of gal where that, you know, service aspect is really, really important. It's the little nuances that can make a big difference. And we really have to know our ideal customer. We have to be very clear on our ideal client. We should be able to answer these key questions. Good. So if you can't answer these key questions here about your ideal client, I suggest you do some market research and start digging. <laughs> so <laughs> start to find out, especially as your business scales and you start to get on um, in the lane of online digital marketing, advertising, things like that. These are going to be key demographics that you're going to need to know and understand about your ideal client. So <clears throat> what challenges are they up against in their lives? So spoiler alert, this is critical. This is like the million dollar question because if things were gravy and fine and everything was dandy and there were no problems, they wouldn't be looking for a solution, right? They're stuck in their problem. And so knowing what their problems are, what they're challenged with allows us to craft a solution for them to give them maximum value. So think about the times where you have spent money you know, there was something in it for you. <laughs> so, you know, think about that in terms of your ideal client. I always say put on the ideal client lenses, like look at that through the lens of your customer. You know, what is it that we're able to create to solve this problem for them and meet them, meet the market demand for what that problem represents on a larger scale? Right. So, <laughs> yeah, pop quiz. Do you know if your ideal client is just aware of the problem or do they know that there's a solution? Okay, good question. Good question, right? Yeah. You know, I think a lot of people can say, yeah, of course they're aware of a problem, you know, um, but do they know that there's a solution? Exactly, that, that's very important, yeah. Well, that's part of the, you know, the customer journey and being able to answer these questions at the drop of a hat tells you how in tune you are with your market. But the answer really is it doesn't matter. You have to market it both. <laughs> you have to market to both problem and solution based stages. So what are the awareness levels that I've been talking about? Um, number one is problem aware. And that is really where your ideal client or customer, they understand that there's something wrong. They are kind of tossing and turning, they may be feeling stressed out, or maybe they're trying to launch a new business, or, you know, they're trying to um, find happiness and joy, whatever that is, there is a problem. Think about, you know, times that you've gone to Amazon and ordered something that you needed off Amazon because you were working on a project and you needed some, another piece right. because you couldn't complete it or whatnot, right? We, you know, 
looking at there's a problem the person is aware of that problem mm -hmm. but they're not quite aware that there's a solution so the next phase or stage that um we're going to see them go to is that solution awareness stage and that's when you see people start to seek out answers they're going to go to google they're going to start asking friends and family they're going to go online and start poking around because they have a problem they want to find a solution they no longer want to be in this point of pain so sense. yeah so when we're talking to people who are problem aware we're going to use different language than solution aware because if we come at them with the solution when they're just still in their problem they're not going to connect to that language we want to make sure that we're validating people where they're at and letting them know that we are a brand that they can know like and trust exactly. and to build that trust you have to have that solidarity you have to have that that um, connection you have to be able to mirror back and validate what's going on in their life they want to know that you know um don't you know it's kind of like don't tell me show me kind of thing <laughs> so that solution awareness is when they're going in there they're looking for answers they know that they no longer want to feel the way that they're feeling they may not know what that solution is yet but they know now that it's out there it's so awesome. that's whoo okay so there is a way for me to find joy and happiness fantastic so exactly. <laughs> the next stage is product aware so okay i have a problem i now know there's a solution but now i need to find that exact solution i need to find that product that service that coach that consultant that whatever that you are you know in your product your service you know letting them become aware of who you are what you do and what problem you solve for them yeah and that is that product awareness i have a you know program like for me i have a membership site so it's just looking at you know this is the product i deliver to my ideal client to help them solve their problem okay. and then last but not least but most importantly is ready to buy that's an awareness level so they know your product exists but are they ready to purchase it exactly right? So it's good to know where people are on the stage because if somebody's problem aware, you're not going to want to give them ready to buy language. You'll you'll lose them. They're going to feel, you know, they're like, I don't like know you. I don't know what your solution is, but you're telling me to buy something. We've all been in those situations where we're like, eh, no, ick, right? So <laughs> that's, uh, you know, that's where people make those missteps. So ask yourself, what brings them to find you, right? You particularly, you know, <clears throat> do they know they have a problem? Are they looking for a solution? What information do they need and what objections may they have? So asking yourself these questions, you know, yes, they know they have a problem. Okay, check the problem aware. Are they looking for a solution? Yes, check their solution aware. What information do they need? I need to make them, you know, product aware. What objections may they have? That's going to look, that's going to target that ready to buy piece. So these are the questions you can ask yourself when you're working with, you know, a potential client or customer, you know, to see where they're at on the awareness scale on the level. So you are targeting your language specifically for where they're at and then moving them forward. So it's our job as marketers, I'm a marketer and business owner to understand how to market to each segment of that scale, right? So provide the information along the way. That's what we do. We give them the right information at the right time to help guide them during this journey. We're not forcing anybody. We're not coercing everybody. We are just offering information and they can take it or leave it. And that allows us to have more authentic um, communications with our clients because it, it, it's about them. It's not about us. And we can invite them to be on this journey with us. And hopefully they're going to opt in, right? If we have that good connective language, because we're very aware of where our ideal client is on, on that scale, well, then they're not going to feel coerced. So common questions. How do I move someone along the customer journey, right? 
will this take a long time? <laughs> this customer trade, there's four layers, Kimberly, this is looking like quite a large cake. <laughs> and if you're not sure where they're at, how can you tell? Exactly. That's very, right? yeah. So I have a very easy answer for you. Do it oh. with an effective lead magnet, or some people call them opt-ins. Okay. And this is something that you know, my agency does with people is creates lead magnets and and we create multiple magnets at different awareness levels. So ask yourself those critical questions going back to, you know, um, you know, do, do they know they have a problem? Are they looking for a solution? What information do they need and what objections may they have? And come back to this lead magnet and make sure that you're answering those questions, you know? And so this is a very easy way to find out how um, or the lead magnet allows you to find out how to target the right spot on the journey right your language is going to be specific it's going to give value to your ideal client on day one it's an interaction it's building trust they're going to feel like they have gotten something from you there's the kind of law of reciprocity where you know i've gotten something from you i will reciprocate it back so it opens up this relationship and it also allows you to continue to nurture that relationship. Of course, being a marketer, we're going to take their email address that they use to opt in and we're going to then, you know, start an email marketing sequence around that. But um, even that communication is going to be geared and moving them along the customer journey. And this is something that you can guide them through very quickly. I can have a conversation and, and it, with somebody and say, wow, it sounds like you're really struggling with that. You know, um, would you want to find joy and happiness again? Yes, I would. Okay, great. Well, I do have a coaching program that teaches people how to be joyous and happy. Would you be interested in some information about that? Sure. Okay, great. And then duh, 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 I just move somebody very quickly along that scale. So it doesn't have to take a long time if your language is strong. Exactly. Copy is queen. So if you don't have a copywriter, get one. <laughs> you know, my agency does it, but you know, really make sure that your language is tailored and it's language that your audience knows, uses, understands in your marketing. So in case you needed another idea, I'm glad you asked. <laughs> So if you're still going, well, Kimberly, I'm not quite sure how I'm going to identify where they're at. Well, using an online quiz is also a really fun and interactive way to understand where exactly your ideal clients are. So a quiz can very easily take somebody down a customer journey quick. So, you know, you're going to have these eliminator and qualifier questions throughout that quiz sequence that's going to allow them to give you information and where they stop off, it, you know then exactly where they're at in the journey. So we're just going to take all the guesswork out of it. If, if somebody opts in to your opt-in and it was really targeted at that problem awareness stage, then you know where they're at in the customer journey. So when you're putting them into that email sequence, you're going to make sure that what's firing off is nurturing them to solution. And then we're nurturing them to product awareness, then ready to buy. So you're nurturing at each stage. Right. Wow. So if you have any questions, you know, follow me on social, reach out to me. I know that was like a very condensed, I was like, okay, I got to, I can be very verbose. So I want to keep it down, but, um, but feel free to reach out with any questions. If anybody that's listening to this, of course, has questions, uh, Franny, I just fire them off to me. You know me, I love good Q and A. <laughs> yeah, yeah, definitely. Uh, Kimberly, uh, do, I have a question. Um, in regard of the 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 site that you mentioned, uh, it, that is open, or we do we need membership in order to be able to take that test, that quiz, and find out uh, in which state our customer are? Well, these are just tools that allow you to do that. But like for instance, when I work with my clients. 
you know, we have a, an audit and we do an in-depth conversation and we look at, okay, where are you at in your business? Yeah. What are your targets and goals and objectives? You know, where, you know, asking those, going back to those four questions, uh, you know, kind of really brainstorming them on each level and then creating targeted marketing pieces to each of those levels, depending on what your industry is or what your product is. Yes. So, um, you know, as a, as a business owner, you know, these are just tools that I wanted to throw out there for, you know, somebody going, well, how do I do that? Well, oh, okay, a lead magnet, um, or, you know, going online, uh, to jot form. I think I put on here jot form. So using an online quiz product like jot form or quizzer, um, you know, that those can allow you to build out some quizzes pretty quickly and extract that information. Good. And, and Kim, uh, all these apply for any type of customer, no matter if we are online, doing online business, or uh, maybe you don't have any presence online and you have your own uh, business and you can apply the same thing to anyone because the idea is to know our customer. Right. Yes. Yes. I mean, if let's so let's say I had a brick and mortar, let's say I had a clothing store. Mm -hmm. I know that people are going shopping in my clothing store because a maybe they need, you know, my, I have a, a boutique. And so I know that my ideal client's probably going to be, uh, you know, a, a woman ages, you know, 35 to 55 who likes, you know, kind of the finer things, uh, you know, because that's what I'm stocking in my store. So I'm going to target that audience. And I have to understand the personality of my ideal client. So going back to these um, questions here that you want to ask yourself, where do they shop? What do they do? Where do they live? You know, if I'm in a brick and mortar, they're probably somewhere in my, you know, metropolitan area. You know, if I'm some, if I'm in a zip code with, uh, you know, that's in a higher income bracket, I know I might be able to charge more premium rates. Exactly. You know, where else do they shop? I want to know as a clothing boutique, what's my, what's my competitors? You know, where else are they spending their money when they're not spending it with me? And that's going to let me know what their tastes are. You know, what are their hobbies or interests? You know, are there somebody who reads Yachting Digest and they travel all over the world? Exactly. Um, or are they like, you know, antiquing, gung-ho thrifters, recycle, reduce, reuse folks, right? So they prop that would not be my ideal client at a boutique. Exactly. So it, it, yeah, it works either way for service-based or product-based business. It's about knowing your client and understanding, you know, if you're a restaurant or a store, how do I, you know, how do I cook the right meals? How do I stock, you know, the right clothing or supplies or whatever that I'm selling? in my um in my shop to make sure that i'm getting the sale yeah and and how can you uh identify the difference between a market research versus a customer journey market research is a specific um task that you'll do to extract information and you'll use market research in in your customer journey marketing. Mm. So the market research allows you to understand your ideal client. And then once you understand your ideal client, then you're going to create targeted marketing to that ideal client. So the market research allows you to extract the information about them. And then you use that in your marketing. Okay, great. And uh, um, Kim, let me see if I have someone from the chat. Uh, someone, I see we have uh, Maria, Catherine, we have some uh, uh, Samsung thank guy for being here. We are watching you guys. If you guys have any questions, you can also type it in. Uh, we will be able to answer. Uh, you can type in the chat. So we will be able to reply. Um, Kim, um, Oh, I'll stop sharing here. So just in case it would make it easier. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. We are here. And uh, uh, Kim, how how do you see the customer journey entering into the the future? I mean, where we are right now, we know that everything been changing. This is all new. I take something from you. You said to be comfortable with the uncomfortable. I never forget that. I get that from you, and I repeat that over and over with my my customer. 
because it's true, you know, uh, uh, how can you be comfortable in the middle of all, all this chaos? And uh, how do you see the customer journey? How do you see the customer like interacting, behaving in the middle of all this chaos worldwide? Where we are going right now? What is the trend? That's the question. Well, I think, you know, the trend, I don't think there's just one trend, right? It, it becomes industry specific. If we, if we start talking about kind of the future, you know, how we interact with our customers will change with artificial intelligence and virtual reality revving up in the next three to five years. The landscape of how we do business is going to dramatically change. But that's just the tools to interact with our customers. The same psychology will apply. It doesn't matter if I'm doing it virtually or if I'm doing it in person. My service is to solve your problem. So yeah. I need to know what your problem is. I need to understand who you are, what is going on, why are you struggling, what is the problem you need solved, and here's my solution to help solve it. So that psychology doesn't change regardless of how we interact with each other. Just like the same, you know, the same psychology has been true for brick and mortars. You know, um, it's it's still the same. So I think you know, chaotic or, or, you know, kind of ever-changing times. I think right now people are waiting to stand still, but there's still so much abundance out there in the world. And um, I, you know, I know to be true that if your marketing is really targeted you're going to be in front of the customer ready to buy from you. Right. Yeah. So they're going to, you know, the, the customers are always out there. Ideal clients are, out, are always out there. You just have to be savvy enough to connect with them as a business yeah. owner. Yeah. Yeah. To me, this is a huge topic, uh, Kimberly, because it, it, to me, it's so much important to know and understand my client. But sometimes I do it naturally because I just do it naturally. I find out that how I connect, how I build relationship with my customer, it's easy for me because I have that natural. But when we study, when we, when I listen from you and we call by name those those uh, skills that we have, we grow them and we we yeah. become better person. We become better at building relationship and learning from our customer and knowing what they really want. So I think this is, I mean, it's, it's so much important. I would like for you know everyone to really pay attention to this. If you have a business, if you are an entre entrepreneur, if you are someone that uh, deal with customers or, or you know clients, because there's a difference between customer and client. So if you are someone in connection with other people and building relationship to know and understand the customer journey, uh, I think it's, it's, it's great to know. This is fantastic topic. I, I can spend, uh, I would say hours talking about this, about what is important to our customer. Do you know them? Like you said, those questions that you have, uh, where they live, where they shop, you know, what will be even their next step? Because sometimes you ask the customer, do you have this, but what else do you need? And they say, oh, I also need this product. And you, you may be able to provide a product as well to the customer, or maybe if you find three, four, five customers with the same need, you can create something to provide the same thing to them. So Correct. it's very important, yes. it's very important to really learn, know our customer. I think, yeah. And I think one of the key takeaways that, you know, I just want to reiterate is really understanding the, the customer journey because you want to understand the language to use with your ideal client. That is critical. If I only speak Japanese and you're talking to me in French, it's not going to connect. Yeah. And a lot of times people do that because they want to be, I'm look at the best, I'm the best product and oh my goodness. And it's really me centric or they're talking in the solution-based language of somebody who's in a problem awareness stage and they can't connect to it. Right. So, you know, looking at how, you know, if I know how to talk to you, I'm going to be more effective. That means I have to use your language. I have to understand your culture. I need to know who you are 
to be able to do that in a real effective way. And, uh, uh, Kimberly, something that I see happening is uh, we have different type of uh, clients that they speak one, two, three languages, even five languages that they come to your place and they are your clients. And we really cannot connect because sometimes it's the language barrier or maybe, uh, you know, they're just looking for something specifically, but what will be your recommendation when you are someone like that, someone that have this product for everyone, but you don't speak the languages, but they're still selling their products. So how do you apply the customer? I mean, learning, learning from your customer or knowing what your customer want when you cannot connect with them. So how did you apply customer journey versus not knowing your customer? I don't know if you if you got if you follow me. I'm I'm following you. I'm following you. You know, my my first my first thought was to ask the question, well, how did they get in front of you if <laughs> how how did how did that connection happen then? You know, I mean like, yeah, like, like you know yeah. like that, but you know kind of going to what I was saying earlier is that the tools that we have nowadays with language, I mean, there's so many ways to find alternatives when you really want to be creative, right? So um, I was working with a client once and they had um, somebody come into their program who, you know, was deaf. So they had to find, you know, the right interpreters and, you know, language assistants and stuff like that. And we made it work, right? You know, it just is how much do you want to lean into that uh, with Google Translate or finding somebody that speaks the language exactly. and then subcontract uh, subcontract that work to them to interpret it. I mean, there's ways to be creative about that um, now, especially nowadays because we have so we have so much access to so so much. It's 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 crazy. <laughs> Yeah, 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 yeah. And I think, and I think people, people are more aware, like uh, before when we used to do this type of, uh, you know, events or something like that online. And people now are more like knowledgeable about things that can go wrong. They are like more flexible. I think it's, it's because of the new world, yeah. that we're living, the new way that we are living. They are more flexible. They are also... They understand if you speak another language, like before I remember, no, if that person doesn't speak my language, I, I can uh, do business with that person. Not anymore. Now you see people going to even churches and all over the place, they use translator, like it becomes yeah, normal. Yeah. So that's the beauty of the new generation, what we are living now. Yes, I wholeheartedly agree. Um, we just have... We just have so much more robust tools at our fingertips nowadays. And it does, it, it, we really are, well, we're a global economy. You know, what happens in, you know, Europe and Asia affects what happens here. It's right. all interconnected. And we saw that um, during COVID, during the supply chain issues and yeah. stuff like that. Um, you know, it is anybody who doesn't understand how globally connected we are, um, I would encourage you to do some homework. <laughs> exactly, exactly, that's true. Yes, we have the contact, the, the information in this video. So feel free to connect with Kim. Uh, she's also a writer. Could you tell us, Kim, a little bit more about what you also do, your services? Because I, I go to Kim a lot of time for anything that I need. She's very great. Great to us. Um, yeah, you know, uh, so Coaching Hub is a place for personal and professional development. So we do uh, coaching for, you know, small to medium-sized businesses and entrepreneurs. And then anybody looking for that personal development, parenting help, or, you know, finding that joy and happiness that I was talking about earlier, whatever that looks like from a mental wellness perspective. So we do one-on-one -on -one coaching in both of those avenues, but we also do done for you services as an agency. So uh, if you're looking for copywriting, graphic design, uh, social media banners, social media content, social media graphics, uh, you know, website creation, landing page creation, all of the things that service-based entrepreneurs need to 
launch their business and maintain it. Email marketing, we do copywriting for that. We build out sequences, we set up zaps. We do the whole nine. So um, we're really uh, one, we're, we're a one-stop shop. And uh, uh, it's really, it's it's fun for me to, you know, be able to sink my teeth into so many different aspects because I am so multi-passionate. <laughs> it's, um, it, it serves me well. <laughs> That's good, Kim, but thank you so much for your time. Um, I think it's been great to uh, have this topic today. And uh, if any of you guys have any questions, you can always uh, feel free to send it to me. Usually post the email address and how to connect with us, with Kim as well. And we can get back to you as soon as we can and get Perfect. those uh, reply on time. So we make sure that you get the answer. <laughs> Love the chase and the hunt and I set the pace when I'm running I always take what I want and I always give it 100 Don't need a bank, no I'm funded Play the game like it's nothing I'm always thankful for something Don't take for granted, stay humble